God. Meantime, Netanyahu is finding himself in the middle of another controversy. According to an Israeli television station and worldwide media, the Israeli government says it will consider a peace package that includes discussions about Israel's 1967 borders. The government is denying the reports, which would represent a big about-face for the Israeli leader who has refused U.S. President Obama's demands for those concessions just months ago. Joining us now to talk about why Netanyahu might be making this move and how this could impact the peace process is Jonathan Shanzer with the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, if true, is this a major concession for, uh, for Netanyahu, if it's true that he did indeed uh, accept the, essentially the 1967 borders as a starting point for negotiations? Well, it's a concession and it's not, and, and I'll explain why. Uh, on the one hand, uh, when Netanyahu came here uh, just several weeks ago uh, and uh, spoke to the media from the Oval Office, he, uh, he rejected the notion that Israel should have to uh, begin negotiations uh, from that perspective. In other words, he said actually several times it's not going to happen, uh, and it was uh, seen largely as standing up to President Obama, who had sprung this idea of 1967 borders with land swaps at the very last minute, and Netanyahu stood up to him. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think most analysts of the region realize that uh, this is basically the formulation that the Palestinians and Israelis have been working from for quite some time, really throughout the 1990s and the Oslo process, it was always based on the idea that the West Bank and the Gaza Strip would be uh, Palestinian territories and that the Israelis would have to ultimately determine uh, where their red lines were, so to speak, on uh, borders that they could live with. And that is effectively the 67 borders with land swaps. So uh, it, the, it's interesting that Netanyahu has stepped back from the brink, uh, but at the same time, it should be no surprise. Is there any risk there for him politically? Well, absolutely. Uh, he has a right-leaning coalition. Uh, but I think the real risk for him, and I think the reason that really prompted this, is the fact that the Palestinians plan to declare a state at the United Nations in September. And what Netanyahu is really trying to do right now is to forestall this or prevent it entirely. Uh, the Palestinians are going to do this in an attempt to, uh, I think, really go after and pursue the Israelis uh, for the land that they wish for their national project. They want to do so in the ICC and the ICJ. In other words, going after Israel legally uh, in international legal fora that are usually uh, leaning against Israel. So Netanyahu wants to stave this off and for that reason I think he's accepted the notion that he would go back to the negotiating table if the Palestinians would agree to sit there with him and not pursue this unilateral declaration of independence or UDI as we call it in Washington. Do you think there's a realistic prospect of the Palestinians actually achieving UN recognition for statehood? Well, no, uh, quite frankly. I mean, what we're seeing right now at the UN is that uh, the United States will likely veto uh, the uh, UN Security Council bid by the Palestinians. And uh, I'm not even sure that the U.S. would even need to veto it because I don't know if they will have enough votes uh, to get to the nine necessary in order to even force that veto. So what's going to happen is uh, the Palestinians are going to take it to the General Assembly, which I believe the date is now September 20th or 21st, where they will forward their uh, declaration to the General Assembly and they'll need two-thirds of, the, of those voting uh, in order to ratify it. And I think they'll get those numbers, but you have to remember that any such resolution passed by the General Assembly is a non-binding one. It would not admit the Palestinians uh, as a state, as a member state of the United Nations. So what would happen is, is it would be sort of a pyrrhic victory. I mean, they would, they would gain the recognition but wake up the next day and realize that nothing had really changed. And I think that is really what the Israelis fear, is the frustration that would build from that could lead potentially to what we would call an intifada, an uprising that the Palestinians could launch. They've already launched two in the past and it has been devastating to the region and Netanyahu I think has accepted this negotiation position that you mentioned because he wants to stave off yet another uprising. Do you think the uh, the protests, I mean, just before you came on, we, we showed some protests that were going on in Israel, uh, pretty loud, pretty big crowds. Do you think that's got anything to do with, with perhaps a concession to the left, if you could put it that way, from, uh, from Netanyahu? 
Well, it's interesting. I mean, you know, they are protesting over economic issues, and, yeah. and if you look at, at Israel's economy, it is booming. It is doing better than every other country in the region, and, and in fact, better than this country right now. Uh, here in the United States, we're struggling with a debt crisis that the Israelis, quite frankly, don't have. So fiscally, the Israelis, I think, are doing very well. I believe that these protests are sort of an outgrowth of the left. They don't really have a leg to stand on uh, when it comes to pressuring the Israelis to make concessions to the Palestinians. The Palestinians have been uh, non-partners over recent years. So I believe this is the way that the left is now finally voicing uh, some of their frustration of a right-wing government. They can't really do it from a political perspective, so I think they're going to try to do this from an economic perspective. The left has always hated Netanyahu when he was prime minister in the late 1990s. There were protests just like this one, but they were in favor of peace. It's interesting that we're not seeing that right now, but it's economic. So it's, it's sort of a funny situation looking at this in Israel. It's hard to un understand what their real grievances are. All right, Jonathan Shanzer, I appreciate it. Thank you again. My pleasure. Now, there has been some frightening violence against Christians in Iraq. A car bomb exploded outside a Roman Catholic church in the city of Kirkuk this morning, injuring at least 20 church staff members and other people living nearby. Uh,